This is the Poco X6 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. We can see a rubber gasket around the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are now 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. On this top plastic cover, there's an antenna flex cable on the top right. And the LED flash is located here. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cables can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The red and blue coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping them off. Looking at the main board, we can see the 64 megapixel primary camera, the 8 megapixel ultra wide, and the 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera has OIS or optical image stabilization. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top, the headphone jack is located here with the rubber gasket around it. And there's some copper tape and graphite film over the shield to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we can see the 16 megapixel front facing camera, the infrared or IR blaster, and more copper tape and thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once that copper tape has been peeled back, we can see additional thermal paste on top of the processor and the red thermal pad on top of the RAM. Now it's the first time I've personally seen a red thermal pad. Here's a better look with the thermal paste and thermal pad removed. There's more graphite film on the bottom speaker assembly to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we can see the speaker itself, as well as an antenna board on the corner. The primary microphone is located on the subboard underneath the metal shield. The charger port is located next to it with a red rubber gasket. The SIM reader is located on the back. We can now see the vibrator motor or haptic feedback motor on the bottom right side of the phone. Both that and the fingerprint reader are held in place with some adhesive, so if you wanted to replace those, you would have to apply some heat and gently pry them off. 
To remove the battery, there's an adhesive pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a look at the 5100 mAh battery. Now that the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the screen flex cable which is routed through an opening in the midframe. So if you wanted to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top plastic the cover and the cover itself, You'd have to disconnect the battery cables and pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Once the cables have been peeled back, we can see a 3D layer of graphite which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard top transfer heat. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located over here. If you need to replace that, you have to gently peel off the flex cable and pull out this plastic bracket from inside of the frame. Here's a look at that. As for the buttons themselves, those can be pulled out of the frame. The proximity sensor board is located on the top, which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the top earpiece speaker. Now for anyone who's worried about accidentally puncturing the microphone or the filter for the microphone, both on the bottom and top, by inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone, you don't need to worry since both the filter and the microphone are seated above the hole, so there's no way they'll get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.